the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ transfigured for us for our salvation. Be with all of you. to the church, to this house of prayer, to ask the Lord to help us be transformed, or more literally, according to the gospel passage today, to be transfigured, according to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. May this celebration of the Eucharist on the second Sunday of Lent help us to be renewed in the Spirit so that we can live by the Spirit and be strong against the temptations of the evil one. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have prayed to sin with the thoughts of the Lord of Christ. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. shall your dependence be. Ibram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur to the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I possess it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Ibram brought him all these, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other. But the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Ibram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Ibram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, then appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch, which passed between the pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Ibram, saying, 
to your descendants I give this land, from the Wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. The word of the Lord. St. Paul to the Philippians. Join with others being imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and observe those who conduct themselves according to the models <coughs> you have in us. <clears throat> For many, as I have often told you, and now tell you, even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I have and long for, my joy and crown, in this way, stand firm in the Lord. The word of the Lord.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to the Lord. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance, and his clothing became dazzling white. Behold, two men were con conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them. They became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Springtime is almost here. That's why we're all wearing our heavy coats. Right? There's new freshness, new looks, and of course, a new setting on our clocks. Although I don't really believe that this is so much a change but an illusion. We're still getting the same amount of data. Only the government is waking us up an hour earlier. Hmm, think about that. So it's time, of this time of the year, we are all looking for something new and refreshed and totally changed from winter dreary to summery bright. Today's readings are a series of biblical accounts that show a total change. Just like the words of encouragement that we heard on Ash Wednesday when the ashes were placed in our head. Repent and believe in the gospel. In other words, change. Our first reading tells us how the people of Abram were changed to a people of God by way of a covenant. And the covenant is a solemn agreement made by God himself. Just as God changed the name of Abram to Abraham, so he also changed Abram's people to a people of God, and they would be guided by God forever. The name Abraham means exalted father. Abraham is the common patriarch, patriarch of the Abrahamic religions, including Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. So if anyone should come up to you and ask, what God do you worship? Your answer should be, the God of Abraham. So today's first reading shows that God himself is signing the covenant made with Abram by the smoking fire pot and the flaming torch, which represents God passing between the pieces of the cut up meat offerings. This represents an ancient way of making a treaty between two people. But in this case, it is God himself that is making this covenant. 
The second reading from Paul, in a subtle way, further explains that we have fallen away from imitating the way of Jesus and are going our own separate way. We have fallen away from the way that God wants us to behave, and Paul is telling us, imitate me, because I too once fell away, and now I am totally committed to the way of the Lord God. My way is not easy, but it is the right way. Paul underwent a tremendous change. His followers knew that, and now, and now know that what Paul is teaching is absolutely the truth. Paul is so serious in his words that he is shedding tears of remorse because of the way some people are acting. He is passionate in his teaching about this man, Jesus. Paul continues to cry out, don't they understand that what they are doing is absolutely against the way of Jesus and what he stood for and what he died for? Come on, people. Wake up. Wake up to the way of Christ. The Gospel reading is where Jesus is physically shown as a divine being to his closest disciples. He is God. And even when they found themselves in the presence of God, even Pete, Jim, and Jack didn't quite get it. But then, even more confusing and disorienting was the voice coming from the cloud, and they heard for themselves the very words of God the Father. This is my chosen Son. Listen to him. Although this was frightening in a way, they still had a very hard time taking these words to heart. All of this is very confusing because shouldn't they just have been watching him? But now, now the Father is speaking. And why? Because the words of the Father puts the transfiguration into proper context. The command to listen to him refers to our Lord's upcoming passion. Worse still, Jesus then spoke about the need to follow him in this suffering. Jesus is transfigured. He is changed to show us the final goal of our life. And that final goal is glory. The Father's voice is heard to highlight the means to that end. And the means to that end is the way of the cross. Listen to him, because the passion is the path to glory. That he shares with us the glory of his transfiguration means that also that we must share in his passion. Now, didn't we hear similar words at the baptism of Jesus, also coming from his Father? This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. These similar words were spoken then and now again. God the Father is personally showing us how we need to meet face to face with his Son, so that we can truly meet our very self. When we behold his glory, we learn our lofty calling and goal. And to quote the words of Pope Francis, when we listen to his words, 
we learn the path to such glory. The truth is that only in the mystery of the incarnate word does the mystery of man take on light. Unfortunately, we are, we are a hard-headed people because of original sin. We are told to do something, and I guess we do it for a while, and then we fall back into our old habits. And, and old habits are really, really hard to break. But now, once again, Jesus is physically showing us that he is God. His Father is telling us, this is my Son. Once again, Jesus and his Father wants us to carefully listen and to change our ways. We are asked during the season of Lent, these 40 days, to begin a new journey of life, just like St. Paul and just like Abram to Abraham. When we place our absolute full trust in the Lord, then not only will we be changed, but the world around us will begin to stand up and take notice. And I think that now is a very good time for the world to stand up and take notice that there is a God. And we all need to listen to him. God, have mercy on us all. I believe in God, the Father of the Lord, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in the Spirit. give glory to God who has concern for us all. We now call upon him and say together, Lord, save your people. Lord, be present to the bishops and priests of your church who share your role as head and shepherd. May they lead us to the Father under your guidance, we pray. Lord, Lord save your people. For your love into the hearts of all who share the one bread of life that we may grow in unity in the body of your Son, we pray. Lord, save me. Help us to strip off our sinful selves and to be clothed with Christ, your Son, the new Adam, we pray. Lord, save me. Through our Lenten outreach, wells of salvation, teach us to serve the needs of others and to be like you who came to serve, not to be served, we pray. Lord, save me. Grant that all may do penance and find forgiveness, so that so share in the fruits of Christ's redeeming death. We pray. Lord, save Have mercy on all the dead and bring them to the vision of your glory. Today we pray especially for Bill Giniak, Paulina Kianis, Desmond Oliver, and Michael F. Carden. We pray to the Lord. Lord, save we pray for all the families that are uh, starting their spring break, for young families, for protection, uh, so they make their way back safely. We pray to the Lord. Lord save the people. For those who suffer, uh, still suffering, the consequences of COVID, uh, for relief and for healing, we pray. Lord save the people. This Time, I would like to offer this prayer that was composed by Pope Francis and like we did a couple of weeks ago. I would like for us, you to join me just, just listening to the prayer. And, uh, Lord God of peace, hear our prayer. 
We have tried so many times and over so many years to resolve our conflicts by our own powers and by the force of our arms. How many moments of hostility and darkness have we experienced? How much blood has been shed? How many lives have been shattered? How many hopes have been buried? But our efforts have been in vain. Now, Lord, come to our aid and grant us peace, teach us peace. Guide our steps in the way of peace. Open our eyes and hearts and give us the courage to say, never again war. With war, everything is lost. Instill in our hearts the courage to take concrete steps to achieve peace. Lord, God of Abraham, God of the prophets, God of love, you created us and you call us to live as brothers and sisters. Give us the strength daily to be instruments of peace. Enable us to see everyone who crosses our path as our brother or sister. Make us sensitive to the plea of our citizens who entreat us to turn our weapons of war into implements of peace, our trepidation into confident trust, and our quarreling into forgiveness. Keep alive within us the flame of hope, so that with patience and perseverance we may opt for dialogue and reconciliation. In this way, may peace triumph at last, and may the words division, hatred, and war be banished from the heart of every man and woman. Lord, diffuse the violence of our tongues and our hands. Renew our hearts and minds so that the word which always brings us together will be brother or sister, and our way of life will always be that of shalom, peace. Salam. Amen. And baby Maggie prayed in her own way. <laughs> Let us be seated now for the offertory. Now pray that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O oh Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up of your thoughts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just 
our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Savior. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we attain. Holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. A mystery of faith. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. 
Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant them by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo, Gary, Michael, our bishops. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through whom he man with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Oh. 
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us what still occur to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. to congratulate Sean for making his debut in recording our mass. Would you please stand? Thank you for recording our mass. And he looks better today, but it's because he came accompanied by his beautiful wife. So welcome and thank you for being with us too. Yes, he needs that support. Okay. And of course, Bert, thank you for, for training and uh, being it's all dependable. God bless you together with your wife as well. Uh, on, the, on the screens. I'd like to also uh, give a special welcome to Sandra. Where did she go with the blanket? There she is. Thank you, uh, Sandra, for being here with us. Let's put our ha hands together for her. So, like, uh, she told me that she needed to be in the hospital. Did you escape from the hospital? <laughs> no, 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 but I need to go the way. We'll give you an assistance afterwards after the mass. So, on the way out, just greet her and I will wish you well, Sandra, with your life and with your health as well. Uh, kudos and congratulations and our prayers go with you, those of you whose names are Joseph or Patrick on this coming week as we celebrate St. Patrick's on Thursday and St. Joseph on, on Saturday. And the Archbishop has received several requests, especially for St. Patrick's Church in, in near downtown around 35 and, and St. Joseph and a few others uh, that um, said, well, it falls, you know, these are two big feast days and um, the, this Lenten third, the third, Lenten, Lent, sorry, Friday of the third week of Lent is happens in between the, those two um, feast days. So he uh, lifted the obligation for fasting and, uh, and uh, abstaining from meat for that Friday the 18th. And that's to everybody, not just to those churches. So in case you want to take advantage of that, now we're going to be But <laughs> for whatever it's worth, it's good. Any other announcement? I'm sorry, I didn't sound very good. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Let us stand for the final blessing before I continue messing this thing up. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head. Bow your heads and pray for God's mercy. Bless your faithful. We pray, O oh Lord, with a blessing that endures forever and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Peace to love and serve the Lord and serving each other.